Welcome to Passion for Fashion. Run away with us to the runway as we show you the signature looks that you need to know. Today, we focus on urban, the inner city inspiration that has become one of the biggest trends on the catwalk. This is a look at the designers that are taking downtown, uptown, the celebrities and pop stars that have influenced or created the look, and the key items for your wardrobe. Then it goes a little something like this. Our show today is Ghetto Fabulous, although the idea of making something from nothing has got a little more expensive these days. You can find urban influences in the work of DKNY, Hood by Air, Kenzo, and House of Holland, who took the Latino gangster girl as inspiration. Alexander Wang is a high-end brand that is courting the urban market. Rapper ASAP Rocky has become the poster boy for the label, which in its spring-summer 2014 collection paid homage to 90s hip-hop with these denim-inspired trousers and jackets. To find the origins of this trend, you have to go back to the streets and to the dawn of hip-hop. This is when sports brands like Lecoq, Adidas and Kangol became associated with the forefathers of the scene, Run DMC and Grandmaster Flash. Check this out. Run DMC wore Adidas tracksuits and trainers with their gold chains, creating this old-school look. Today, as Adidas launched an Originals line, they called in the trio to hark back to those days. And all I remember is doing this, taking them out the box, putting them up on my dresser, and going to bed, looking at them. The 90s began a new era for urban style. It went loud. In West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. As the Fresh Prince of Bel Air became a TV hit, so did the style of the cheeky Fresh Prince. Hold up, that was like 10 years ago. I'm like light years ahead of you now. Oh. I got in one little fight. His vibrant clothes and Jordans became a must for fans of the show. Don't you complain. The 90s also meant a change in brand favorites for the urban closet. Hill figure became a staple, finding fans in Coolio and Snoop Dogg. Calvin Klein tapped into the market with a campaign featuring rapper Marky Mark and Kate Moss. Rap legend Tupac became the poster boy for hip hop style. From his iconic bandana to his denim dungarees, he changed the scene. Urban stars today are all about the good life and the good clothes. Big names in fashion are the new currency for the scene, and today it's not out of place to find big names in hip-hop on the front rows of shows, or being covered head to toe in the stuff. When Beyonce co-directed her video Party, her wardrobe was a roll call of Tom Ford, Givenchy, and Martin Margiela. A lot of hip-hop stars have turned designer. Wu Wear and Apple Bottom Jeans have the Wu-Tang Clan and Nelly, respectively. Nicki Minaj has launched a collection just as loud as her personality. Channing Tatum caused pulses to race when he took to the catwalk for Diddy. You can see why the line is so successful. Jay-Z's Rockerwear label is the top-selling urban brand out there, with annual average sales hitting a whopping $700 million. And pop star Ciara became the face of the brand. Kanye West is known for his style, so when he took to Paris Fashion Week with his designs, expectations were as high as the celebrity count in attendance. Although his label DW has been put on the back burner, he had tremendous success in his shoe designs for Nike, Vuitton and Dion Lee. Kim will obviously get first pick. When Run DMC went against Aerosmith in their Walk This Way video, there was only one victor, those laceless Adidas trainers. They were paid $1.6 million to wear those shoes, and they probably walked away with them. Adidas is a brand so entrenched in the urban scene, but the origins of the trainers couldn't be further from the hip-hop lifestyle. The Adidas story begins in Germany, where two brothers began designs on what would become a lucrative business. Adi and Rudy Dassler came from a family of shoemakers. Adi managed to convince US sprinter Jesse Owens at the 1936 Munich Olympics to wear his designs. And after Jesse went on to win four golds, business for the brothers boomed. 
the Dasslers were selling 200,000 pairs a year. World War II hindered the business, but when the brothers reconvened, they fell out spectacularly and they split the company in two. Rudy formed Ruder, which was later rebranded Puma, and Adi Dassler created Adidas. Adidas has never been an acronym, no matter what they say. Both businesses have done well, but the brothers never reconciled and were buried as far apart as possible in the same cemetery. That's keeping a grudge going. Today, Adidas has branched out into fashion. Its Style Essentials brand is in partnership with designer label Y3. Their limited edition Y3 shoes are catwalk material and have appeared within Y3 designer collections. A recent spring line featured a take on the famous Adidas Three Stripes. The collaboration between the brand and Jeremy Scott has proven to be a huge success. In the video for Scream a Shout by Will I Am and Britney Spears, Jeremy designed this piece specifically for Britney. Cute or daft, you decide. What is certain is a multitude of stars have taken to these JS wings. Another high-profile designer involved with the brand is Stella McCartney. Her sportswear designs for the label have been such a success, she has continued to produce work for them since 2004. In one show, she hired athletes to model the clothes in water tanks. The brand also understands the benefit of association with celebrity designers too. David Beckham has a line in his own name under Adidas. Rita Ora has just signed a two and a half million dollar deal to design for the brand. The singer has modeled for DKNY and Rimmel, and this will be her first go as a designer herself. With her urban style and chic cool, it seems a perfect combination. As urban fashion is so closely associated with music, our countdown is going to be a close call as The Who is our number one. First up, number five. It's Salt and Pepper. Classic hip hop and style doesn't come much better than Salt and Pepper. The rap duo stormed the charts with Push It, bringing what was an underground fashion to the mainstream. The look they rocked has been resurrected again and again from MIA to Nicki Minaj. Gold chains and these bright jackets are definitely items of old school style. Push it real good. Hey, yo, hey, yo, I heard you riding with the same talk. Azealia Banks seems to cause a lot of trouble for the celebrities she tweets, but since she burst onto the scene, there is no doubt that the woman knows her fashion. Alexander Wang got her jumping and singing along to her single Van Vogue for his campaign. Against the backdrop of cityscapes, her look in 212 with the cute pigtails, cutoffs, and Mickey Mouse jumper showed hip hop has a new face. And now it's time for the wildest side of the catwalk in everyone's favorite section. What the fashion? The work in space is for me. Who said punk was dead? That's quite a hairy chest. Ah, only the licorice one is left. No need for those pesky headphones with this dress. Hugging not recommended. An accident waiting to happen here. Oh, disaster, the black boots don't go with this at all. A bird in the hair is worth two in the bush. Is she coming or going? I'm lost for words. Wouldn't want to meet her in a dark alley. Back to our countdown as we find out who came third in our urban fashion chart. With 90s fashion making a return on catwalks, it's no surprise that TLC find themselves once again in focus for their style. T-Boz, Chili and Lisa Left Eye Lopez were the coolest girls of R&B music. With head-to-toe tie-dye, baggy jeans and bras as tops with matching coloured cargo pants, uh, maybe not all of it was that cool. There is a film in the pipeline about their time together. Get those cargo pants out. I 
fly like paper, get high like planes. If you catch me at the border, I got visas in my name. MIA is the rebel with a cause. Her music has soundtracked political plights in the world and social messages in the way hip hop did back in the day. Her mother was a seamstress and it seems the skill has rubbed off. MIA has collaborated with Versace for the Versus collection. Taking the knockoff designs found at dodgy market stalls as inspiration, MIA has reinterpreted this idea into a line that is urban and very, very cool. Apparently, Donatella thinks it's genius, and we do too. I'm not afraid. Yeah. It's been a ride. Everybody. I guess I had From the beginning of urban fashion, the sneaker has been the central piece of the look. It stood for aspiration, and some labels have tapped into that. We know that Adidas led the way with the help of some of the biggest names in music, from Run DMC to Katy Perry, but there are other contenders out there. You can try and read my lyrics off of this paper before I lay them, but you won't take the sting out these words before I say them. Nike teamed up with rapper Eminem for a collection. He has always been a fan of the brand, so this partnership was perfect. The profits went to his charity, the Marshall Mathers Foundation. Nike holds claim to the most expensive trainer in the world. Only 202 sets of the Nike Paris trainer were produced. Getting a pair of these will knock you back thousands of dollars. Anya Hinmarsh and Jimmy Choo have their own take on the sneaker. It'll be only a matter of time until the Nike Paris finds itself outpriced. We take a look now at the moments in cinema that brought street style to the masses. West Side Story was a breakthrough film. Expressing the struggle between rival gangs in inner city New York, whereas we at home are fighting over who looked better, the Jets or the Sharks. Today's hip hop style references the 50s of the West Side era. Honey. Jessica Alba was perfect for the film Honey. The tale about coming from poverty to achieve her dream as a choreographer was actually inspired by the true story of Laurie Ann Gibson, who now works for Lady Gaga and Katy Perry. Laurie makes a cameo appearance in the film. OK, let's throw that in after the clap. Jessica combines sportswear and baggy jeans, a stable for the urban woman. Those enviable abs may be harder to achieve, though. Save the Last Dance is yet another dance-inspired story. Sarah, played by Julia Stiles, is a former ballet student who moves to inner-city Chicago. Hey, you dance? I used to. Falling for a boy at school, she soon embraces the culture and style around her to find true love and a new dance. Tying a gap cardigan around her head, Julia unwittingly started a trend on the street. Now if you need me, call me. Sister Act 2 featured a succession of names that were yet to break through, and one of those was Lauren Hill. Are you Rita Watson? Yeah, that's me. She plays the skeptical Rita, who befriends other classmates to form a choir with the help of Whoopi Goldberg. Rita and her friends ooze inner city cool. I'm different, yeah, I'm different. I'm different, yeah, I'm different. To finish off that urban wardrobe, you're going to have to spend some real money on that essential accessory, bling. Gold chains are a catwalk favourite as well. The look originated from the streets, and some designers have taken to making it their choice accessory. The irony is, big rappers like 2 Chains and Kendrick Lamar have taken a fancy to vintage chains from brands like Chanel. Pull up to the scene with my silly messer. The bigger, the better. Nelly Furtado once sang about her big hooped earrings, and she wasn't wrong. The look, which came from the Hispanic community, now graces the catwalks of Dior, as well as our favorite Canadian singer. Tell her, make me a grill. Grills are a trend that not everyone can pull off, especially for the price. 
teeth made of gold and platinum, once a favorite of rappers, and now gracing the mouths of pop stars like Rihanna, Miley Cyrus, and Katy Perry. Lady Gaga typically took it too far by using real human teeth. Ugh. Not sure what a dentist will have to say about that. Gucci and Vuitton have become today's bling. Accessories by the fashion giants are now the item to carry or feature in your music video if you're rocking the urban look. We have a lot of saving up to do. Back to our countdown for the big reveal. It's our number one. Hey! In a passion for fashion first, we have joint winners for our countdown. Pharrell and Nikki. Damn. The king of cool Pharrell Williams is representing the men, whilst Nicki Minaj is pounding the alarm for the ladies. Oh, oh, oh. Come it's rare to be successful in both music and fashion, but Pharrell has pulled it off. Whether he's channeling his hip-hop roots or James Bond in a tux, he's a bona fide style icon. Oh. Esquire magazine labelled him the best-dressed man in the world. Nicki Minaj has such a presence in pop due to her style that it's not uncommon to find her on the front row of the biggest fashion shows. Let's find out more as we look at Pharrell and Nicki for fashion. When the two joined forces for Nelly's Get Like Me, Pharrell and Nicki may have stolen the show from right under Nelly. Tell your boyfriend you stand with Simone. Pharrell wore this hoodie from his label Billionaire Boys Club. As well as running his own record label and producing music, Pharrell founded the urban fashion line with a bathing ape designer, Nigo, a few years back, and it's been as successful as his other ventures. Billionaire Boys Club is a premium streetwear line that now has stores across the globe. Jay-Z, another hip-hop fashion mogul, has jumped on board and has partnered with Pharrell. <laughs> Due to his success with Boys Club, Pharrell launched Ice Cream. No, not the real stuff, but cool items inspired by the skater scene. There is now a billionaire girls club, so you girls aren't left out, and Beyonce is a fan of the line. With all this style and talent, it's no surprise that Pharrell has been called in by other fashion labels. Louis Vuitton has asked him to design jewelry and glasses for the label, and he modeled this campaign for them. Mark and I collaborated on the sunglasses this year. He totally let me just come in and do what it is that, um, that I, I wanted to do, and he's made it such an, an incredible um, impact on, on me and, and just seeing that you can do anything you put your mind to. Sunglasses giant Montclair were obviously impressed by his work as they snapped him up to design a range of shades for their latest collection. You think that you don't have to have a quit. You think that you can get away with it. You think the light won't be ever lit. It's almost over now, almost over now. Nicki Minaj entered the charts in some very loud outfits. Whilst it was a great way to get noticed, we were glad to see that recently she has reined it in for a more sophisticated take on hip-hop style. Nicki and Fashion have been long-term friends and she has fronted campaigns for big names. She became the face of Versace's H&M collection. When Jeremy Scott teamed up with Adidas, Nikki was the perfect woman to wear the colorful designs. And she took to the catwalk for a Victoria's Secret show where she was accompanied by models rocking her style. The most unexpected fashion moment for Nikki was when she became friends with Anna Wintour while sitting on the front row of an Oscar de la Renta show. We did not see that one coming. Nikki has recently launched her own collection, the imaginatively titled The Nicki Minaj Collection. It's just like her creator, bold, colorful, and urban influenced. Let's see if her mate Anna will put the line in vogue sometime soon. Hotter and hotter. Our king and queen of the scene, Pharrell and Nikki. Oh. That's all for Passion for Fashion this week. To play us out, we have this Y3 collection to check out. Until next time. Whoa.
Welcome to Passion for Fashion. Each week we endeavor to see that fashion victims are gone for good. Today it's all about survival as we venture into the great outdoors. Hot or cold, wet or wild, these are the designers that have your backs covered, whatever the weather. We look at celebrities that know how to shelter with style and the pop stars that don't need a map to guide them around their closet. Time to wrap up in only the best. Today, our show is a shining example of how to brave all the elements Mother Nature can throw at you. Cara Delevingne brought the outdoors indoors in this Mulberry campaign. Come on, Cara, you can't stay in your house forever, even though your owls are cute. There is so much to see outdoors, including more owls. Hey, Cara, there's a host of designers who want to keep you warm. You could ask one of your friends at Burberry for one of their iconic trenches. The trench is a coat once worn by soldiers, but has since become a must for its full-length protection from rain and wind, as well as keeping you looking cool. You may want to look cool, but you don't want to feel cool. The winter coat is a wardrobe essential, as sooner or later that season will strike. Louis Vuitton, Michael Kors and Superdry have each considered our warmth, but perhaps not our wallets with these jackets. Karl Lagerfeld designed a line of winter-inspired outfits for his full collection. If that iceberg is real, those furry all-in-ones will certainly be keeping those models warm. Take my hand and come with me because you look so fine that I really want to make you mine. A winter jacket is not enough, however, for those wanting to venture onto the slopes. Montclair took things rather literally with this ski slope themed catwalk, but there is no doubt that they are one of the most forward thinking ski wear brands out there. Although their colors may be subtle, it's their shape and designs that will make you stand out on the slope. If you fancy an ice skate at the bottom of the mountain, Montclair will keep you steady. I said, are you gonna be my girl? Dolce & Gabbana wowed Milan with their ski-inspired collection. Ski fashionistas may go crazy over those goggles, but those snow boots and big sweaters are winter winners for all of us. You don't always have to go high end just because you are going to high altitudes. 66 Degrees North is a brand whose origins are Icelandic. If anyone knows how to keep warm, it's an Icelander. They can keep that giant snowplow though. Looks very dangerous. Right, it's got too cold. Let's head to the beach. Sister, don't you? Tommy Hilfiger must have heard us as he built one for his summer collection. His California-inspired line will suit the athletic beach babe. This scuba outfit will turn heads, even underwater. D Square 2 took the Tiki Girl as their inspiration. threw a full-scale tiki party on their catwalk, complete with bar. <laughs> Jason Wu, Hervé Legere and Marc Jacobs made 2012 a summer splash with their swimwear collection. <laughs> Every 
Everybody's Gone Surfing, the Beach Boys once sang. And Quicksilver, Billabong and Roxy are counting on it. Together, they are leaders in surfwear. Billabong throws an annual charity ball in which surfers take to the catwalks in their clothes. And finally, it wouldn't be a need-to-know great outdoors special if we didn't discuss camping. Staying out in a tent may not be for everyone, but this D squared 2 line will please most. Couture camping, who would have thought? If you want to design a tent to go with your attire, Christopher Raper not only used camping as a source of inspiration on the catwalk, but took it further by designing a tent. It's great stuff, but looks pretty muted compared to Zandra Rhodes' offering. No hiding from bears in this. <laughs> Bell Staff is a label that has risen to prominence of late due to their new store launch and a certain David Beckham, but it's been keeping us warm since the 1920s. It wasn't only the 20s that was roaring. The era's motorbikes were roaring too as they became the coolest way to travel. As the motorbike rose in popularity, demand for protection from the elements rose too. Eli Belovich created the all-weather jacket for those bikers with his new company, Bellstaff. Soon, Bellstaff went worldwide with the rise of the motorbike. Lawrence of Arabia was a keen motorcyclist who chose the brand. Amelia Earhart, an aviation pioneer, flew in Bellstaff jackets, and revolutionary Che Guevara was a fan too. The motorbike monarch of the silver screen, Steve McQueen, chose Bellstaff as his favorite. His main item was the Bellstaff Trial Master jacket, which now has fans in Angelina Jolie and Kate Moss, who modeled the campaign for the brand. Bellstaff has a history with cinema, having dressed a range of colorful characters from Indiana Jones to Sweeney Todd. When aliens attacked the Earth, Tom Cruise was there to save the day in his aptly titled Bellstaff Hero Jacket. Ewan McGregor was the face of the brand in a campaign intended to hark back to Steve McQueen. It's hard to believe that the brand struggled in the 90s. After Lavalux rejuvenated the label and Tommy Hilfiger became a consultant, the brand became a must-see for their catwalk shows. Bellstaff is now a major player in fashion and has a new flagship store in London. David Beckham brought in the motorbikes for the opening of the five-story shop in Bond Street. Beckham may have also invited his new friend Anna Wintour, whose presence can only cement its reinvention as a top label. Bell staff have not forgotten their past with their latest collections. Recent catwalks use their biker jacket as inspiration and also the famous wax cotton fabric to construct these chic numbers. Time to get on your bike. It's now time for our countdown. These are some of the singers that have jumped out of the woods and into the charts. At number five, it's Robbie Williams. I just wanna feel real love. Robbie was the very British cowboy for his video, Feel. Working on a ranch in the Canadian mountains can get lonely, so Robbie called a pre-Kill Bill Daryl Hannah to come and spend some time with him. In this video, Daryl wore this cozy-looking jacket to brave the snow on her horse, and Robbie chose this heavy trench. Robbie hired former Burberry designer Ben Dickens for his own label, Farrell. Although the brand was short-lived, his quilted barn jackets and pea coats would have been good additions to his mountain adventures. Florence Welsh is everybody's favorite fashion kook. Karl Lagerfeld loves her. Frida Giannini loves her as well and designed Gucci dresses for Florence's tour. 
So when she stepped into the great outdoors for her video Rabbit Heart, it was always going to be something a little different from a typical woodland trip. In fact, this resembles a Mad Hatter's tea party. Picnic wear has never been so ethereal. Tucked away in Bloomsbury, London, is Lamb's Conduit Street, which has become a haven for British designers who deliver on the more rustic side. Our factory in Manchester has been making raincoats for over 100 years, and Private White's given it a new lease of life. It's thriving again. We also source fabrics, textiles, everything we can from within the British Isles. This coat's called the Northerner. Um, because it's hardy, it'll last forever, essentially. The, uh, this is one of the warmest, most durable coats we do. It's, it's made of Ventile, which is a uh, miracle fabric. It was developed during the Second World War for Spitfire pilots. It's waterproof, breathable, windproof, and 100% cotton. It's soft, it's luxurious, but it's also unbelievably practical. Another shop which features on Lamb's Conduit Street is Oliver Spencer, but you can also find his designs for the outdoor man on the catwalk. Folk is another UK company that can also keep the elements away. US brand J Crew has moved here. Their holiday campaigns show they can dress you whatever the weather, from an icy Argentina to a sweltering Morocco. With J. Crew's arrival, things on Lamb's Conduit Street may not remain a secret much longer. Don't wait too long to visit. Right, back to our countdown as we find out who came third in our list of woodland warblers. At number three is Ellie Goulding. Hit me with Not only does Ellie burn up the charts, she has also made explosions in fashion. She has BFFs in Cara and Rita Ora and is usually found on the front row of catwalks. Ellie is obviously a fan of stargazing as she stepped outside at night in her video, Starry Eye. She was kept warm by this cute woolly hat and her boyfriend too. For her number one smash hit, Burn, she brought the festival to herself. Although organizing an outdoor party on a runway is perhaps not such a great idea. Carly Rae Jepsen is the city girl who is just after a good time. And where else better to have one than a camping trip? Good time. Carly is an expert in glamping, it seems. That's glamorous camping to you and I. Knowing it's smart to wear a closed-toed shoe in the woods, she has chosen Isabel Morant's silver sneakers. Tie-dyed cutoffs are a little more boho than the usual denim cutoffs. Although let's hope she packed the insect repellent. Those legs are pretty vulnerable. The best look she's achieved is making camping look fun. There is really no need to end up covered in mud at a festival. These are the designers and celebrities that have honed their festival chic. D squared 2 seem to be the masters of outdoor wear. Here they show you how to remain boho and cool at the festival. As you can see, the Wellington boot is a key item, and other designers have their own take. Ashish has encouraged nature under the boot to grow up and around the garments of these models. I guess it's one way to get in tune with nature. Yes, 
If you're after some rather special Wellington boots, Louis Vuitton have these high-heeled versions for the most glamorous festival goer. And Prada produced these epic wellies just in case Glastonbury becomes a swamp. You can't mention Festival Chic without mentioning Kate Moss. She has hit festivals with impeccable style. She pretty much invented the combo look of hunter wellies, short shorts, and whatever she has to throw on top. The rock star boyfriends are also a good accessory. Sienna Miller is another who sets a high bar. On a hot day, you'll find her in a vest, but most of the time she keeps her look boho, accessorized with a hat. Emma Watson is used to designer glamour and sees the festival as no reason to tone it down. She even took this Vuitton corset with her, next season no less, and the Louboutin wellies are also worth a mention. If you want to know how to tackle the great outdoors in style, look no further than this collection of films. Wes Anderson took his childhood dreams of love and made them a magical reality in his film Moonrise Kingdom. I want to go on adventures, I think. Two adventurous 12-year-olds find companionship and escape to a tented world on the beach. Do you love each other? Yes, we do. Talk to head sideways. Susie Bishop, played by Cara Haywood, was an instant fashion icon. She chose to explore the world in an impressive collection of looks. No wonder she has luggage to carry. Her shift dress and knee socks are the most chic an adventurer can get. This is my favorite record album. When Cara took to promoting the film in Cannes for its premiere, the lucky girl was dressed head to toe in Vuitton. Now for something a little less glam. We will risk death a number of times. Meryl Streep thrilled fans in the whitewater action flick, The River Wild. If you want to pull this look off, you're going to need some serious waterproofs. Fashion truly follows function in circumstances like this, but that's not to mean it cannot be a strong look. Own it like Meryl. This war is lost on the battlefield and is being lost twice over by those who stayed behind. Life out in the wilderness during the Civil War never looked as good as it did in Cold Mountain. Miss Lovey Dovey! Surviving the wilderness, both Renee and Nicole go practical with big jackets, but we think Nicole wears that hat pretty well. <laughs> Things are about to get hot. Brigitte Bardot helped popularize the bikini in the film The Girl in the Bikini. Fellow Frenchie Louis Riordan designed the bikini, a now essential piece to pack for the holidays, but at the time Bardot wore it, it caused a fuss. The bikini made a splash in the film The Beach. Virginie Ledoyen fascinated Leonardo DiCaprio in this blue triangle bikini. Why? Just making a conversation. This simple design is timeless. Here it is, our countdown number one. Bjork is a music maverick, as well as someone who pushes the boundaries of fashion. She has used nature as her point of inspiration for her music many a time. When she launched her solo career, she made us all scared of the woods with this bizarrely brilliant human behavior video. Who would have thought a teddy bear could be so terrifying? She is the mother in Mother Nature. Let's take a look at how she has tied music and fashion together in what will be an offbeat Bjork for fashion. And so peaceful until you fall in love. Simple. Bjork has always been a musician playing by her own rules. In. Due to her individuality and talent, she has worked with the greatest fashion designers, photographers, and producers. From her first album debut, it was clear that she was special. Big Time Sensuality, with its video of her in New York, quickly became iconic. Hey, 
Wanting to change her look, she worked with the newly graduated Alexander McQueen. His catwalks were always spectacular events, and Bjork knew this would work for her album, Homogenic. McQueen shot the cover and directed the video for Alarm Call. Stepping out once more into the great outdoors, McQueen chose a jungle for Bjork. She floated quite happily with snakes and alligators around her, until the piranhas caused her trouble. McQueen dressed her up in a beautiful beaded dress that didn't leave much of the imagination for pagan poetry. And in this giant bell for her video, Who Is It? When McQueen died, she performed in this design at his memorial. It seemed made for the Icelandic songstress. You can't mention fashion and Bjork in the same sentence without mentioning that Academy Awards dress. She took her Marjan Pajoski swan dress to the red carpet, laying eggs as she went. Her love of nature has had a huge influence over her work. The video for yoga took Bjork back to Iceland to wonder at its volcanic landscapes. Being fascinated with nature, Bjork had a dream meeting with David Attenborough. They hit it off, talking about how music and nature worked well together. Bringing them together is what she did with her album Biophilia. For the visuals, Bjork asked to borrow some pieces from the avant-garde designer Iris van Herpen. Iris's shows are always eye-catching and have used nature as an inspiration. She was once an intern for McQueen, and this show was about the embodiment of wilderness. Bjork wore one of her pieces for the video Moon, as well as the album's cover. There is no second guessing with Bjork, and we guess there never will be. We love her for that. To close the show, we thought we would finish in tropical Rio. Once a year, the best beachwear designers come for Rio de Janeiro Fashion Week. Blue Man opened the week, but look out for designs by Salinas, Tria and Herchkovich, as well as a much talk about line by Coca-Cola. Until next time. Welcome to Passion for Fashion. Each week we look to the designers who lead the way and the celebrities that serve as their muse. Today we take on accessories. If you can't keep your hands off a handbag or get high on high heels, then this is where you should be. No dress is complete without the right piece to finish it off. Check out the items you cannot be without. So far in Passion for Fashion, we have shown you the might of fashion's biggest names. Yves Saint Laurent, Chanel, Vivian Westwood and Prada, to name a few. But what really keeps these major players going are not these spectacular dresses, but the accessories that carry their name. The bags, the shoes, the jewelry and fragrances of fashion brands are a chance for the majority to buy into the glamour. In a way, the couture shows are a glorious advertisement to the many that will buy the perfume, shoes, or maybe a handbag. Perfume is just as important as to how you define yourself as your clothes. Its origin stems from perfume gloves being a way the rich didn't have to smell the poor whilst on the streets. Today, actresses fuel aspiration. Chanel No. 5 was one of the first fashion fragrances. Coco wanted something that smelt of the gardens of the orphanage where she grew up. Five was her lucky number, and the bottle's design has remained the same since its launch in 1924. Nicole Kidman starred in an £18 million advertisement for the fragrance. 
Such a fool. And today it is fronted by Audrey Tattoo. The perfume bottle can exude the flair of its designer. And none are more recognizable than Jean-Paul Gaultier. His shows are known for their mischief, and the bottle and the campaigns capture his cheeky appeal. Dior perfumes give women a shot of elegance, but you will have to move Natalie Portman out of the way if you really want to be Miss Dior. She can't weigh much. In the design world, scarves are a luxury item. Hermès have been enfolding the elite with their exquisite patterns on silk since the 1930s. For a more rock and roll look, the McQueen scarf could be your choice. It was a celebrity favorite upon its arrival. To celebrate 10 years of the scarf, the enfant terrible of the art scene, Damien Hirst, would collaborate with the brand for this special edition. Skulls and insects, if you like. Hats can transform a simple dress into something elegant. If you are looking for a statement piece, Philip Tracy may have one for you. Naomi, Gaga and Grace have worn his pieces with flair. His hats are so extraordinary, he has his own catwalk shows. Stephen Jones's pieces have dressed royalty. Jones has a muse and supermodel Erin O'Connor. The statuesque model is perfect for his spectacular pieces and prepared him for dressing real statues when he created a collection for London's landmarks. Nelson never looked so sharp. However, we like these cute hats from the latest Chanel show. If you're a big name celebrity, you're going to need shades to keep those light bulb flashes out. Just as well, Dolce & Gabbana stepped in to make Madonna a pair. Well, actually six pairs. The MDG label was photographed by Stephen Klein, no less. Dior's Audacieux shades are just as audacious as the line suggests. But if you want something a little more delicate, they have the Demoiselle design. Gucci are also masters of the shades. And Frida Giannini's designs are as striking as the billboards on which they feature. It's quick. Diamonds are a girl's best friend, Marilyn once sung, and the jewelry business counts on it. Tiffany & Co. began as a retailer of many luxury goods. Tiffany's. But its diamonds are what they are best known for. Tiffany's jewels were made iconic by Audrey Hepburn in Breakfast at Tiffany's. Like that. And helped Carrie Mulligan bedazzle Leonardo in The Great Gatsby. Cartier is a family brand that began designing watches, but now designs some of the most sought-after jewellery pieces in the world. Kira Knightley finished off her Valentino dress at the Golden Globes with these Cartier earrings, proving accessories are the key to get on the best dress lists. Festivals such as Cannes and award ceremonies have heavy security for the jewels that are lent to celebrities. Small can be beautiful. Louis Vuitton decided to end the days of the oversized bags with their latest campaign. However, the label was founded on making luggage in 18th century Paris. Once a small shop in the French capital, by the 1900s, Vuitton was the world's largest travel goods supplier. The iconic LV logo was based on a Japanese design, which was a trend in the Victorian era and still features on the luggage today. By the 1940s, the brand was producing small bags and purses that go with the luggage, items that opened the market wider for the label. It was the appointment of Marc Jacobs as creative director in the late 90s that transformed the production of Vuitton. 
He began designing ready-to-wear collections as well, to great success. The brand was now synonymous with fashion and accessories. Vuitton also associated itself with the glamour of Hollywood. Actresses Uma Thurman and Scarlett Johansson have both featured in campaigns. And most recently, Michelle Williams launched the Capuchin bag, which sold out upon its arrival. Sofia Coppola has been a friend of Marc Jacobs for years. And after a successful accessories collaboration, she has now become amused to the Vuitton Cruise collection. If you are going to launch sunglasses, you need a cool pop star. And Mark asked Pharrell Williams to design a line for Vuitton. Madonna put her strength to another campaign. I'd rather be and none other than David Bowie sang in the latest campaign. I'd rather be dead or out of my Mark Jacobs has recently stepped down from Vuitton and has been replaced by Nicolas Gesquier. He is known for transforming the fortunes of Balenciaga. His lariat bag for the label became the must-have item for the likes of Kate Moss and Sienna Miller. His shows have always been daring, so let's see what he does with Vuitton. Pop stars need a few bells and whistles to stand out. This is our countdown of the top five designers who have adorned the chart. Yes, I swear. At number five, it's Victoria Beckham. She may have been the Spice Girl that didn't sing too much, but she has always been the most stylish. Though the girls were a global success, she had better things to come. Victoria Beckham's self-titled brand is its own success story. Critically acclaimed shows, winner of awards, and a business that has sold over 95 million in sales. Let's not forget Victoria is also a mum and named her latest bag after her daughter, Harper. The Harper bag made its debut at the New York Fashion Week show. Don't act like that. Told ya. Don't act like that. Alan Meekly is a high-end eyewear designer who had come to prominence due to a pair of glasses worn by Kanye West. <laughs> The shutter shades Kanye chose for his video Stronger became a global sensation. The designer's use of unusual colors and shapes has made him a favorite of Elton John. And now it's time for the more obscure items on the catwalk as we delve into our favorite section, What the Fashion? I've heard of skeletal, but this is ridiculous. Ah, Uggs now make a range of jumpers. I don't even know what to say. Your guess is as good as mine. The sun comes up, I think about That's at least 70 years bad luck. That's some serious hair. And that's a beard. The morning ends, this designer watched Beauty and the Beast a few too many times. And this one loved Tron. Or am I losing my mind? Who is number three in our Architects of Adornments list? It's time to find out as we return to our countdown. At number three, it's Emma Hill. Emma Hill was the creative director of Mulberry for six years. She helped turn the fortunes of the company around. Mulberry is a fashion company best known for its bags, but its designs have also made the catwalks. Cara Delevingne is associated with their campaigns, and it has a fan in the Duchess of Cambridge. Emma's winning stroke was to create a series of it bags for the label. 
one of those was the Del Rey. The bag was inspired by the nostalgic glamour of the singer Lana Del Rey. As you can imagine, Lana is a fan of the bag and is proud to sit on the front row for Mulberry. Prada is a family-run business that began selling leather goods. Today, under Muccia, the granddaughter of its founder, Prada is now one of the most influential fashion houses. As well as providing the tour costumes for Florence Welsh and the gorgeous designs for The Great Gatsby, Muccia's eyewear line is one of the biggest success stories for the company. Whether you want something bold or cute, Muccia has it covered. As well as glasses, Prada has heels, bags and jewellery covered. What else do you need? Consider yourself accessorised. The It Bag or Classic have never gone out of style. The appeal of the iconic ones known on first name terms like the Paddington or the Baguette never wanes. Fendi have brought back the baguette after popular demand. Rent, girl, you know I These bags are expensive, but making them is a skill. The very best are handmade. Bottega Veneta began as an artisan leather goods house, and they kept that tradition alive in their handbags. Made from the finest leather, crafted in this exquisite way. The Chloe Parity bag is actually designed to become vintage as you wear it. It's that attention to detail that made it the must-have bag for celebrities Katie Holmes and the Olsen twins. Here we are. Some celebrities are lucky enough to have bags designed for them. Gucci created the Jackie after a certain Mrs. Kennedy. Dior has a famous bag, the Lady Dior, which was named by its muse, Lady Diana. Today, Oscar winner Marion Cotillard takes up the mantle. Give her the bag. I love it! <laughs> Mulberry's Alexa is the bag accredited with the brand's recent success. Inspired by the model and presenter Alexa Chung, the bag shares her cool appeal. Kate Moss didn't just have a bag named after her, she has collaborated with Longchamp to produce not one, but two lines of bags. Not all bags are about money. One bag was for the greater good. Anya Hinmarsh produced the I'm Not a Plastic Bag to encourage people not to use plastic bags. At five pounds, it started riots in Taiwan as people clamored to buy it. Shoes are a lucrative industry, namely because we all need something on our feet. Some items are classic. Christian Louboutin is one of those classic designers of footwear. He brought the stiletto back in the 90s with his signature red-bottomed heels. He's not one to give celebrities shoes for free. They have to buy these beauties. Unbelievably, author Danielle Steele owns 6,000 pairs of them. I think we should all go write a book. Manolo Blahnik is also a classic shoe designer. Passion for them was further popularized by Carrie Bradshaw's love of them in Sex and the City. What would happen if these were to magically disappear? Yeah, I know where you live. For a pair like this, I could move. Labels that began as clothes designers have also seen the market in shoes. Michael Kors, Tom Ford and Chanel each have their own take on footwear. These are the films with some choice items that really made the cut. We all want jewellery, some more than others. In Hitchcock's film To Catch a Thief, Cary Grant and Grace Kelly try to stop a criminal who is not using their credit card to get some beautiful bling. Should I ask the social director to introduce us? Uh, no, no, no. I, 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 I was just wondering which was the best way out of here. In a strange case of life imitating art, 
the Carlton Hotel in Cannes, in which the fictional heist took place, recently found itself the scene of a real-life heist. 34 million pounds worth of diamonds were snatched. Hitchcock's Vertigo also had a case of life imitating art when Kim Novak became the source of inspiration for Alexander McQueen. I worried about you last night. You shouldn't have run off that way. Well, I, I suddenly felt such a fool. Well, I wanted to drive you home. Are you all right? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm fine. No after effects. The designer claimed to be drawn to the actress, just like Hitchcock was, and designed the Novak bag. Purcell sunglasses became a household name when Steve McQueen took to wearing them in the Thomas Crown Affair. He wore a special pair of folding 714s in the film and was often spotted wearing the brand throughout his career. Purcell have continued to make appearances in further films, protecting the eyes of Daniel Craig in Casino Royale and Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible 4. Camels. Desperately Seeking Susan was a vehicle for Madonna's 80s style. She pretty much came as herself in this film, but in doing so revealed her style secrets. Her look influenced the generation with her choice of accessories, combining a wacky assortment of bangles and gloves. <laughs> Barbarella is truly a bonkers film, but its style is hugely influential. It was the film that brought knee-high boots to the masses. To pull these boots off, you need legs like Jane Fonda. Most of the costumes were designed by Paco Rabanne. Today, Fendi and Ferragamo keep Barbarella's spirit alive on the catwalks. There's a kind of cockle shell about you. Handbags at the ready, it's time to find out who made our number one in our list of creative accessorizers. At number one, it's Hermes. This label has them all. Leather, perfume, luxury goods, and of course, ready to wear. Singer Rita Ora is fashion's new favorite in music and she is rarely seen without her Hermes Birkin bag. And Lady Gaga is also a fan. Madonna loves the scarves that the label designs. Let's find out what makes the rich and famous love the French brand so much as we look at Hermes for fashion. Hold your horses. Hermes began as a manufacturer of saddlery? Yes, it's true. Thierry Hermes produced some of Paris's best. The logo of the brand still features a horse and car. The family business began designing bags after the wife of Emile Maurice Hermes complained she couldn't find a bag she liked. That bag became immortal. Alfred Hitchcock asked costume designer Edith Head to purchase Hermes gloves for his film To Catch a Thief. Grace also fell in love with the bag and used it to hide her pregnancy from the press. It became a must-have item renamed The Kelly, which is still the brand's bestseller. The Birkin bag is another must-have. It's a celebrity favorite. Victoria Beckham, Kate Moss and Jerry Hall are all fans. Like The Kelly, it was named after an actress, this time Jane Birkin. Jane donates the money she receives from Hermes to her human rights campaign. The bag was a favorite of Gwyneth Paltrow in the Royal Tenenbaums. What's so funny? Well, it's nice to see you too. A long line of designers have come and gone through the doors of Hermes. Martin Margiela and Gautier being the most notable. For seven years, Gautier ruled the brand. He reined in his usual extravagant self, but still brought quirks to the more conservative label. The business has always rejected mass production. Almost all of the goods are handmade and produced in France. They're a brand that does everything well. Shoes, bags, and even plates. Viva Hermès. To play us out, please welcome Karl Lagerfeld, Tom Ford, 
Vivian Westwood, Christopher Bailey, and Donatella Versace for the show. Until next time. Turn me on, 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 turn me on